Hello and welcome to another Timeless Games video. Today we're taking a look at a black-green Yogmoth combo deck, and the combo revolves around Yogmoth Thrain Physician, a 4-mana 2-4 with protection from humans, which can pay 1 life and sacrifice another creature at any point to put a minus 1 minus 1 counter on up to 1 target creature and draw a card. The minus 1 counter is optional, but we will be using it on our own creature if we're trying to combo off with 2 undying creatures. So we've got 4 copies of Young Wolf, a 1-mana 1 1-1 one one with undying, meaning if it dies and didn't have a plus one counter on it, it will return from our graveyard with a plus one plus one counter on it. So if we have two undying creatures, let's say one young wolf already has a plus one counter, then we sacrifice the one without a plus one counter to Yogmoth's ability, and then select our own young wolf with a plus one counter to receive a minus one minus one counter from Yogmoth, and then once we have both a plus one counter and a minus one counter on the same creature, they will cancel each other out, and now we're back to having a fresh one one young wolf, which can be sacrificed to Yogmoth and will return with a plus one counter once again, and then we can just target the other Young Wolf that already received a counter, rinse and repeat, so we can basically draw all the cards we want at the cost of one life, and then to eventually offset that life loss, we can put a Blood Artist on the battlefield, which will now gain us one life in addition to draining the opponent for one, or we can find our Shieldred, which will gain two life whenever we draw a card, so that way we can draw our entire deck and eventually win the game with Blood Artist draining the opponent to death. And then we also have a one-off Hapatra, which can also be part of this infinite combo, where now whenever we put a minus one counter on a creature, we get to generate a 1-1 Death Touch Snake token. So if we combine Hapatra with two Undying Creatures and Yogmoth, we can make an army of Snake tokens that will be able to attack for lethal on the following turn. So that's basically our game plan, and to speed things up in Timeless we get to play with 4 copies of Once Upon a Time as a free tutor effect early on in the game to help smooth out our draws, maybe find some mana creatures early, or Yogmoth if we don't have it already, can also find a land if needed. And then we also get to play with a Dark Ritual, adding a triple black, so that way we can easily cast a turn to Yogmoth, which can potentially combo off on the following turn already. Then we've got Deathrite Shaman, another all-star in this format, giving us graveyard hate, extra mana with our 8 fetch lands, and the opponent's also likely to have some fetch lands in the graveyard, and then can also gain us more life against burn decks, for instance. And then the Delighted Halfling, another 1-2 mana creature, and 2 toughness is pretty important at surviving opposing copies of Orcish Bowmasters, which we're also playing ourselves. The Halfling also making our legendaries uncounterable, which can be useful if we're trying to sneak in Yogmoth through a counterspell. And then, as we mentioned, Orcish Bowmasters is also perfect in this deck, as it gives us a bit of interaction, can punish opposing card draw spells, gives us two bodies to potentially sacrifice to Yogmoth, and one of them we can potentially replenish if the opponent draws, and then it's also two creatures we can tap for Convoke, and we're running four copies of Court of Calling, which is a great way to find our missing combo pieces, can cheaply get another Young Wolf, or maybe get Yogmoth if we didn't have it already, and eventually our Blood Artist to close out the game. And then we've got our one-off restricted demonic tutor as well to maybe find our missing pieces. And then one Agatha's Soul Cauldron, which has pretty nice synergy in the deck as well. If we exile a Halfling or Deathrite with a Cauldron, all our creatures with plus one counters turn into mana creatures, but more importantly it gives us more redundancy in case Yogmoth gets answered and ends up in our graveyard. We can now exile it, and then a creature with a plus one counter can take over Yogmoth's role in the combo, which is pretty important. And yeah, that pretty much wraps it up. Our mana base has eight different fetch lands, so we can potentially get our basic swamp or basic forest against a blood moon, and potentially save a bit of life when fetching. Two copies of Overgrown Tomb as well, and then the peat land can be sacrificed to draw a card if we're flooding out. Blooming Marsh as a painless land early on. Colony Garden making a plant token still contributes towards Convoke for Card of Calling and another creature we can sacrifice to Yogmoth. And then the Channel Lands offer even more interaction, Bosage an answer to artifacts, enchantments, and non basic lands. And the Abandoned Mire can be important to get back a key creature from the graveyard, like maybe a Blood Artist, so we can close out the game. And then a Phyrexian Tower can also give us a nice mana boost by sacking a creature and getting a double black in return. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw. We are potentially missing a fetch land, but we might get it with Once Upon a Time. And then it's just a matter of finding Yogmoth. So I think this is keepable. Opponent with their own Once Upon a Time makes it more likely to be a Primeval Titan, a ramp deck. And we can certainly win through a bunch of zombies from Field of the Dead. Opponent finds the Battlements. So 
So we do have a fetch landing graveyard for Deathrite Shaman, which is good to know. Kami is next. So our opponent's off to a decent start. Let's see what we can find. Probably go for Swamp here. Does Halfling do anything for me? I guess we could run out of fetch lands for Deathrite Shaman. And going turn one Halfling could be better, but then I'm still gonna need Black Man at some point. Turn two I could also Bowmasters the Kami, so they don't have a green creature to sacrifice to Natural Order. And then Bowmasters also helps with setting up Court of Calling. So I'm down. And I don't think I'll be attempting to block the Shaman token. So we could play Young Wolf. Next turn, Colony Garden still helps with Convoking Court of Calling. Westville Abbey into our Boreal Grazer. So if they have a Natural Order, they can still cast it. Possible their last card is Primeval Titan. Okay. So in that case... Play Young Wolf. No fetch lands in the graveyard for death rites. So we can actually court for X equals 4 here. And then, yeah, we should be able to go off. Get Yogmoth, we've got double Young Wolf. And then next turn we'll draw into a Shield Root or a Blood Artist to seal the deal. For now I'll just take out the Shaman token. We've already played land for the turn, so I don't really need to keep drawing right now. Yeah, for opponent, top decks and natural order, I don't think it really matters. So I'm just gonna pass it back and then we can keep comboing next turn. And yeah, our opponent has seen enough. Next turn we can just draw until we find a blood artist or a tutor for it. And then we can drain the opponent to death. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a keepable hand, I would say. Turn one halfling, turn two... There's some things we can do, like a ritual for bowmasters that we get with a tutor and cast it. Although that seems a little drastic. Might just want a tutor for a Yogmoth so we can cast it next turn and take it from there. And they don't seem to be on a Blood Moon deck. So I'll just play Tapped Overgrown Tomb. Can fetch a basic forest if we'd like. Now with Phyrexian Tower, I guess I technically could have still cast the Yogmoth here by sacking Halfling. But uh, if our opponent has removal, then that wouldn't get us very far. Second death right. Can also be a bit of a nuisance if we try and get back our young wolf from the graveyard. So it is a creature we need to deal with. Opponent's got another one mana play. And brainstorm. Yeah, the line of uh, getting a Bowmasters and ritualing it out could have worked out fine, I guess, but we'll see how the game progresses. Soul Cauldron gives us kind of a redundant Yogmoth if we end up uh, exiling it, but with double Deathrite, that's not going to be easy to set up. So I can court for one 
to get Young Wolf and then next turn play Yawgmoth, assuming the Death Rites are tapped. And with Halfling, we don't need to worry about a counter spell countering Yawgmoth next turn. So I think that's fine. And then we'll pass it back. Could still Dark Ritual and then Court for more than X equals 1. Our opponent does nothing. Yeah, problem with getting Young Wolf now is that if we play Yogmoth and sack it, they just exile the Young Wolf with the Deathrite Shaman. So it doesn't get us very far. So I think I just take my turn then. And top decking Young Wolf helps. I'll just cast that now. And see what their response is. So do I try to cast Yogmoth is a question. I think we just pass a turn once again and then maybe keep Cord available to respond accordingly. So our opponent's just four colors, not a full five. Hoping they just tap out for something big. All right, that sort of counts. So I could still Cord to get Bowmasters, which would then also finish off a death right. Because again, Deathrite prevents us from comboing with Yogmoth here. So I kind of like that idea. And then I will need to fetch, which maybe gives Deathrite more mana, but that's okay. Opponent could still counter this potentially. Getting untapped Hallowed Fountain. And this looks like Counterspell. Okay, so Uro resolves. Now I can also exile it with a Soul Cauldron, so we don't need to worry about it. And now they currently don't have mana to exile anything with Deathrite. Find our own. So if we had another Young Wolf, we could go off here. Probably time to just fire off the Dark Ritual too, and get everything in play. So cast Yogmoth. Can start by attacking for one with the Young Wolf. Sack it to Yogmoth. Draw a card. Find Colony Garden. That's an extra land drop and creature we can sacrifice. Could also discard and proliferate as another potential play, but uh, I'll just keep drawing. Okay. And then Deathrite I could also sacrifice to Yogmoth to put a minus one counter on Youngwolf to draw. Or maybe just a halfling at this point. Just so I can draw a few more cards. And then do we want to cast a once upon a time? I think I would also want to just exile Uro with the uh, Soul Cauldron. So I can get rid of the opponent's death rites. Although I can always do that later. And yeah, just play Cauldron. And exile Uro right now. Counter on Yogmoth or Deathrite. And then pass a turn. Alright, so we did some things. Once upon a time, potentially a way of finding the missing Young Wolf. Hapatra would also be pretty decent. And then eventually Blood Artist. But can imagine they'll answer Yogmoth here. And then I have to decide if I want to sack Young Wolf and get it exiled by Deathrite or not. Alright, Oko. That happens. Could also target the Cauldron for what it's worth. Gonna plus on Yogmoth. So maybe I just let this happen. 
And then if Yogmoth ends up in the graveyard, I can maybe exile it with my cauldron to get its ability. Now we can also just attack Oko. So the fairy is going to bounce. But with the Soul Cauldron, we can actually put a counter on Young Wolf. And take out Oko. So that still works out. Probably start by casting a Once Upon a Time. Finding backup Yogmoth looks good. Well, I guess with Phyrexian Tower, I can just sacrifice the Yogmoth in play. So there's possibility that I can just uh, kind of go off here. Let's say we grab Young Wolf, play it. Then I can sacrifice Yogmoth to Phyrexian Tower to put it in the graveyard and exile it with Cauldron. One Young Wolf has a plus one counter, so it has Yogmoth's ability. Can sacrifice the other Young Wolf, get a minus one counter. Rinse and repeat, as one Young Wolf will always have a plus one counter to use Yogmoth's ability. And we get to draw 14 cards at the cost of 14 life. Problem is, we're going to put this Blood Artist on the bottom of our library, so we're not going to draw into it to win the game on the spot. So instead I would need to hit both Dark Ritual and Shieldred to keep going, so that doesn't seem super likely. So maybe for now we're better off just answering Oko, which means we won't be exiling Yawgmoth to the Cauldron this turn, but I'll still grab a Young Wolf here. And then... Cauldron, Exile Deathrite. But then next turn, of course, we'll have to fight through a Deathrite Shaman. So things are pretty tricky. Finish off Oko. And now we just need to worry about Deathrite interacting with our graveyard. Alright, we'll see how this plays out. The fairy pluses. No, I am not making this up as I go. And a time warp will take an extra turn. Fair enough. Pretty good alongside planeswalkers. So that's their plan. So I'm glad we finished off Oko while we had the chance. But yeah, we were pretty close to going off since. Could have used uh, Cauldron to exile our own Yawgmoth with double Young Wolf, draw a bunch of cards. Problem is, we would not have finished off Oko, and I don't think we necessarily would have been able to win the game on that same turn, unless we happen to immediately draw Blood Artist. I've got it. So the Fairy pluses once again. Hopefully, they don't have a second time warp. Sanctuary put Time Warp on top, okay. I see where this is going. But we get to take our turn. Alright, so now... It's just this uh, Deathrite Shaman that's kind of a nuisance. Otherwise we could just keep comboing with Yawgmoth through Soul Cauldron. That being said, I can start by attacking Teferi with Yawgmoth. And maybe even the Young Wolves and see what happens. If they block Young Wolf with Death Rite, then they would have to exile it right away. And that opens up the window for me to sack Yogmoth and get access to it with Soul Cauldron, which is probably worth it. Could also use Cauldron now just to grow Young Wolf up to a 2-2. I think I'm fine to let damage happen, honestly. Now, they could still easily have Counterspell in hand, but that doesn't affect our Cauldron. The opponent makes the play I described. Now I could exile it with my own Death Rites, just to gain two. Possible I would rather keep Death Rites to exile Time Warp if they try and loop it back once again. So that happens. So Sack Yogmoth. Exile it with Cauldron. Counter on death rights. And then now we can activate Yogmoth's ability on death right to finish it off. Okay, so once upon a time. 
and this is where they might cast their counter spell, memory lapse. Sure. Yeah, I don't really want to sacrifice my young wolf. I could sacrifice Deathrite Shaman, I suppose. Just make more mana. So I can keep going off. Problem is I don't want to remove the plus one counter, because then I no longer have Yogmoth's ability. So... Just sack the death right to draw. Cast once upon a time. That resolves. Find backup Yogmoth. And we can cast it, maybe fetching another land here. Okay, and then I think we'll pass a turn. Bones go to Time Warp, plus a Teferi, makes it a little bit better. But now they can't necessarily Time Warp. Bouncing Cauldron's reasonable. But finding the backup Yawgmoth means we don't necessarily need it. Yeah, there's a lot going on here. Now Court of Calling can get another Young Wolf. But we want to finish off the fairy so we can cast it at instant speed. Just send both at the fairy, I think. Okay. I think we might finally be in the clear. So X equals 1 will suffice. Get a young wolf. And we'll start drawing. So. Minus one counter to replace the plus one counter. Rinse and repeat. And now Shieldred could gain us all the life we need. Uh, or we could wait until we find another cord for a Blood Artist, which can actually win us the game. Yeah, I guess we'll draw a few more cards before deciding. Once upon a time, not guaranteed to find me a blood artist. Dark Ritual helps. So now we can uh, shield root and still potentially cast a blood artist. If we find Hapatra, we can also make infinite snakes, pretty much. And yeah, her opponent has seen enough. Temporarily get triple young wolf. That's uh, always fun to see. And yeah, there we have it. So a grindy game against super friends. But uh, Cauldron definitely showing its worth in this matchup. Okay, we're on the play. And we've got a keepable hand. A little bit light on the mana acceleration, perhaps, since we don't have any mana creatures. But hopefully we'll uh, see the power of Dark Ritual, which could already cast a turn to Yogmoth. Opponent with a bubble. Okay, so I'll hit for one. And then I'm tempted to just uh, play Yogmoth here. Can get Swamp, can get Overgrown Tomb. In case we need lots of green for a Court of Calling. Yeah, let's go for a Ritual Yogmoth. And then we've got Bowmasters to answer an opposing Bowmasters potentially. If they want to flash it in in response to us drawing with Yogmoth, for instance. If they have a fatal push, I'll be a little sad. 
Tormod scripts, okay, that is relevant graveyard hate, but I don't think our opponent's gonna let it resolve. Instead, they appear to be countering it with an offer you can't refuse. All right, so our opponent's maybe about to combo off here. Ornithopter. And a deadly dispute, sacking Ornithopter. Do they also have a Dark Ritual to keep going? Another Bobble. Now we can flash in Bowmasters to punish the Bobble. And then Bowmasters seems pretty good against the opponent's deck in general. Alright, opponent's not sacking the Bobble yet. Possible they want to combine it with another Dispute or they need it for Bargain. Either way, we can hit for three. And then I think the plan is keep Bowmasters available. And Besiege to the Mirror. Yeah, so that might get Song of Creation. I guess we can uh, wait and see. There it is. All right, well, we've got the Bowmasters at the ready here. So if they don't have Fatal Push, they're going to be in trouble. Opponent has to discard their hand now. Let that happen. And then now we'll flash in Bowmasters anyway. And then I will fetch. And that's enough for a concession. Yeah, with Bowmasters in play, it's going to be difficult for the opponent to combo off, especially once we put them low enough. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and we've got a promising hand facing Gigantha. Could be the domain deck. So with a turn one death right, next turn we could both Yogmoth and Youngwolf with a Dark Ritual. And then we're just another young wolf away from drawing all the cards. Besage also could have been useful at destroying a leyline binding. But now we maybe force the opponent to fetch a basic if they're afraid of a turn to Blood Moon. Opponent's got their own death right, which can potentially disrupt our double young wolf combo. But uh yeah, we're in pretty good shape now. I'll get overgrown tomb. And then we want a ritual Yogmoth. Play Young Wolf. And we could take out the opponent's Death Rite Shaman right now. I think that's worth it. Get to draw two cards. And we already have another Young Wolf in hand. And otherwise Death Rite would stop the Young Wolf from comboing off next turn. So yeah, next turn cast Young Wolf, keep drawing, and then eventually find Blood Artist to drain them to death. That would be the plan. Now Thoughtseize takes our author Young Wolf, so that's going to slow things down a little bit. Typically don't see Thoughtseize in the domain deck, so this might just be Junt mid-range. And another Thoughtseize. Okay. Takes once upon a time. So with Cauldron we have a lot of redundancy when it comes to Yogmoth's ability. And for now... We can also... Exile a Deathrite Shaman, for instance. So we have that mana ability available. So now both of my creatures can use Death Rites abilities. Which, uh, yeah, I guess are pretty useful in general. But I'll still attack for five. Opponent's pretty low. Casting all those Thought Seizes does have some drawbacks. And our opponent explodes. Sweet, onto the next one. 
Okay, we're on the play with a fine hand. Could fetch for a forest if we're worried about Blood Moon. Although I think I'm still better off getting Overgrown Tomb with the Windswept Teeth. Play Death Rites. Although our opponent's not playing any companions, so makes Blood Moon a little bit more likely in a way. Could have also just waited a turn to fetch and start with the Peatlands, but then we end up taking more damage potentially. So the goal is to cast an early Yawgmoth, Court of Calling, probably getting a Young Wolf. And then we'll just need to find a second Tutor or Young Wolf to set up the combo. A Blood Artist, I don't mind. And I'll just attack for one. Alright, opponent's ramping, so this might be a Nexus of Fates extra turns deck with Wilderness Reclamation. Could also just be Soul Time midrange, I guess. Alright, Cauldron means that if Yogmoth dies, it's not a disaster. So let's make some mana. And cast Yogmoth. That point's gonna push the Blood Artist. Still get to drain the point for one. Now it's gonna be a little bit harder to win the game. Is our opponent ramping with Uro now? Could also enable Revolt for another Fatal Push here. Although Soul Cauldron gives us some Graveyard Hate for Uro as well. Alright, get to untap. So let's see, if I play Colony Garden, I can Convoke for X equals 3. I'm still not quite sure what I would get. They're also not really close to escaping Uro, so it's not a huge concern. So I might just play Colony Garden and then attack for two, so we can keep Court for X equals two available. If I want to get a Bowmasters, for instance. Could also get a Shieldred next turn. But yeah, in response to the Gross Peril, I will attempt to Court. Get Bowmasters. And then I'll just sacrifice the token now. So we get a replacement orc. And looks like our opponents got their own bowmasters. Okay. Can sacrifice that to take out their bowmasters, which will still, of course, um, trigger again here. So they get to take out my plant as well. And now we get to draw again. Okay. So that all happens. Spiral finally resolves. And we've got a pretty full grip now. We are at 10, so we have to be a little bit mindful. The peatlands not doing us any favors there. Alright, so it feels like we can do something powerful this turn. So let me start by casting the Ritual. Play Death Rites. And then we can tutor using our green. And get Shieldreds, I think. Yeah, we could also just get Young Wolf casted and then court for another Young Wolf, and then we can draw as much as we want. But of course, we're still limited by our life total. So Shield Root can help offset that. And then we can cast Shield Roots. There's no lands in Graveyard, apparently, so... Ok, 
can't quite cord here, so I may as well attack. And pass a turn. Now there's a chance your opponent can escape Uro before we got a chance to exile it with Death Rites or with Cauldron, but it will still trigger Shield Root, so that's fine by me. Rejuvenator could point towards Field of the Dead. And yeah, there it is. Our opponent is playing differently named lanes, but uh, yeah, our opponent has seen enough. Now with Shield Root we can easily draw the rest of our deck. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand's a little slow to get going. Turn one Young Wolf, turn two Blood Artists, turn three can convoke maybe a Bowmasters. This hand feels a little bit too fair to me. Alright, this time we've got a bit more Mana Acceleration with Deathrite. We've got Young Wolf to combine with Yawgmoth. So it's either Bowmasters or Cauldron that I put on the bottom. Cauldron gives us more redundancy in case they answer Yogmoth, But in general, I think we prefer Bowmasters, which also gives us more bodies to sacrifice to Yogmoth. And for now, I'll just play Boseju into Deathrite. Can decide if we need to fetch for a basic Swamp next turn, but most likely getting Overgrown Tomb. Alright, opponent might actually be a Blood Moon deck here with Utopia Sprawl. So, getting a Swamp may not be a bad idea. Even though it will make it a little trickier to cast Court of Calling later, but if we're under Blood Moon, that probably doesn't matter. Could have also waited on fetching in case your opponent's going to Stone Rain me on turn 2. Because then they're probably going to target the basic. So yeah, my sequencing was a little bit off. Especially since we can flash in the Bowmasters, there's no reason to fetch main phase. That opponent's going to bolt the Death Rite, which also provides a bit of mana fixing. And another Utopia Sprawl. So yeah, we're only on two green sources, so we can't currently court for anything. And Shield Root's not the best draw if we're gonna face some land destruction. Bone's got the Fable instead. And a fetch land. So now I can get basic forests. And then most of my author lands will still produce black. Unless we draw like a colony garden. I think I still get basic forest. And so now we can cord for x equals 3. Which, um, yeah, we'll see. For opponent draws with fable that triggers bowmasters. Don't think I need to get another bowmasters here. Alright, put on let's Bowmaster trigger. And another Fable. So I could get a Young Wolf, hoping to draw Black Source for Yogmoth, so we get two combo off. Could also get Hapatra, which would be pretty solid when there's a creature we can target and there's going to be more. Yeah, I kind of like Hapatra here. Could also just get a mana creature so we can cast Yogmoth in the first place. But most draws that aren't a land are probably still good draws. Yeah, if I get Death Rites or Halfling next turn, casting Shield Root's also pretty good. Yeah, you know what, just get a mana creature, keep it simple. And draw another halfling. And then if I play Yogmoth first, we can mow down the opponent's creatures while drawing. Don't mind drawing one card right now. In case we can hit our landlord for the turn. And yeah, her opponent has seen enough Yogmoth. Gonna run away with the game. So yeah, overall, Golgari Yogmoth is a true contender in the timeless format. 
It's a deck that's featuring quite a few broken cards, like Once Upon a Time, Dark Ritual, of course Orcish Bowmasters as well. We've got our one-off uh, tutor as well to help assemble the missing combo pieces. The deck is fast enough to keep up with some of the other combo decks in the format, like Titan Ramp. We can sometimes go off a turn sooner. And uh, the deck is also just good in the grindier matchups once we get cards like Bowmasters, Shieldroot, and especially Yawgmoth going just to draw a ton of cards. Yawgmoth naturally answers opposing copies of Bowmasters, so those aren't a huge concern. And then on top of all that, we also get to play with eight mana creatures that can all survive opposing Bowmasters at two toughness, so that's another boon. And all eight mana creatures also providing a lot of great utility against counter spells and against the graveyards. Now, the only one caveat is that our deck can be susceptible to opposing graveyard hate, so if the opponent starts with a Leyline of the Void on the battlefield, things might get a little bit tough, although we do have the one of Boseju as a potential answer as well. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day!